Hey everyone, today's the day that we talk about inverse functions. So we've been talking, uh, we're in the exponential unit and uh, we're sort of gonna take a pit stop, all right? Uh, we're gonna stop talking exponential for one day just to understand the concept of inverse. And then tomorrow uh, we'll follow up with logarithms, which are the inverses of exponents. But first, uh, let's define inverse, all right? So two functions are inverses if their domain and range are 100% completely inverted. Right, so the domain of f of x, for example, could be the range of g of x, and vice versa. Okay, um, graphically speaking, you're going to notice that inverse functions are reflective, reflected across the line y equals x. So I've got this line ready to go for us. All right, so let's look at uh, a few different examples. All right, so we'll start with a linear function. So here's a linear function y equals, and that turned on all of the functions. I just wanted to turn on one. All right, this is y equals seven minus three x. Okay. And so that is uh, just a regular linear function with a y-intercept at seven that goes down three, right one. Okay, so if I'm gonna find its inverse, its inverse function, uh, I'm gonna start first, and this is true with any type of inverse type of uh, function, all right? I am simply going to switch the x's and the y's, all right? So here it goes, x equals seven minus three y, which Desmos will actually graph for me. And there you can see the, um, the graphical relationship. You see the, the symmetry. Right. You you will also notice uh, inverse points. So, for example, where uh, the original function had a point at zero seven, the inverse function is going to have a point at seven zero. Right. Where the uh, original function had a point at two point three comma zero, the inverse function will have a point at zero comma two point three. So those are inverted points. And technically, every single point has been inverted right now. The catch here is you can't just say that x equals 7 minus 3y is the inverse function. The graph is right, but the notation is not correct because the correct notation for a function is y equals. So all you're going to have to do is solve this, solve this baby for y. All right. You do that by inverting everything else that is that surrounds the y. All right. So I will start by subtracting 7 to both sides and I'm going to follow equivalent graphs. All right. And then I'm simply going to divide by negative 3. So I get x minus 7 over negative 3, and that is an equivalent graph. And then to put it in a slope-intercept form, I'm simply going to divide negative 3 into each term, and I get negative 1 third x plus 7 thirds. And that is how you invert a linear function. Okay, now let's invert a different type of function. So this can, uh, this can get pretty drastic pretty quick. All right, so here's a, a cube root function, which is actually not a type of function that we've studied much or at all, all right? And I'm just gonna notice a couple of things. It's got a y-intercept at zero, negative 1.6, an x-intercept at 0 0.2. Sort of looks like a cube, like a cubic function, except sideways, all right? Now, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in y equals, all right, if it's using function notation. Then, as usual, to find the inverse, I am going to invert the x and the y. That inverts the domain and the range, and you can see how it is symmetrical, all right? With inverted points, there's a point at 0, 2 instead of 2, 0, all right? Now I need to invert the operations around the y. So you have a couple of options. Do you cube to get rid of the cube root or do you add two? Well, the, the order matters. The order that you do things matters. So you actually have to cube first, all right? So it's like doing order of operations, all right? And then you're going to add two. That's the last step that you're going to do. You're gonna add two and you can see that the resulting graph is correct, all right? That is how you invert two functions, all right? To recap that, um, you invert your x's, well, you write it in y equals, invert your x's and y's, and solve for y. Solving for y can be more or less challenging, but it, it is not entirely bad. Here's one last example where I've got y equals. Um, well, actually, we'll, we'll do this next example in another video, all right? Uh, but that is how you invert two functions.